Hey everyone, today's video I'm going to show y'all how to make pants and the tunic to go with your uh, Jedi Masters. So it's going to be a, a how-to step-by-step on what exactly I did to make all of this stuff. Uh, so stay tuned. So this is the pattern I cut for my pants. Just take your fabric, fold it. The top here is going to be the waist. So lay your figure out. Make sure again that you leave yourself extra space on the sides and then cut up to where the crotch will be. Uh, and you're just going to, on the inside seam here, you're going to sew pretty close to the line and then kind of make it to a point and then sew back down. On the outside, you're going to start, you know, on the corner, but as you work your way up, you'll want to taper it at an angle. So as you can see, otherwise when you go to put it on your figure, if you just sew straight up lines, it's not going to fit snug around the waist. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this real fast and then I'll go All from right. there. So now that I have them sewn, what I'm going to do now is cut off the extra slack on both sides and then make a small cut in the top. And from there I can just cut over for the waist. Now this is going to be a little big. Obviously his waist isn't that wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off my slack, flip it inside out, put it on him, and see how much I need to, how much wiggle room I have with the legs. So what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll make the legs a little bit tighter once I see how it fits. So let's I'm gonna do that right, real fast. Now that I have it on him, I can see, you know, I've got extra width here. But it's I've got a little wiggle room, but not a lot. So I know it, it's tighter on the, uh, the left side here than it is on the right. So I know I can go back and do another, another seam on the left. A small one on the right, I don't want to go too much more because it's already kind of snug. But then I will, I'll taper that waist up because I know roughly about here is where I need to angle it up more. So let's take this off and sew right. another seam. So I like the look of this. Now the thing is at the top, I mean, it's not going to be, I mean you can go back and sew it as many times as you want, um, but I usually just kind of leave it like that a little bit loose because when you put the top on the figure, you'll never see it. I mean, it's, it's hidden, so it doesn't matter if it's not really super tight at the top. Now to give yourself, you know, that finished look at the bottom, what you can do is oops, flip it back inside out and you'll take just a little bit of glue. Uh, you can use hot glue. Uh, if you do use like a super glue or something like that, uh, I recommend dabbing it onto a Q-tip and then having a paper towel and actually, you know, getting most of the glue off and then just rubbing it across because um, it doesn't take much of that that super adhesive type glue um, to stick but if you put too much on and then you fold it over it's going to bleed through and then you'll see like dried glue coming through the fabric so you definitely want to you know wipe most of the excess off and just rub the q-tip across the fabric and then just fold it over and use your thumbs as pressure and just hold it there for about you know a good 10 seconds and then when you let it go it'll be stuck down uh, do that on both sides and then when you flip it back inside out you'll get that that finished look at the bottom so they don't you know so it doesn't look like like I said just like cut fabric so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that real fast and then we will move on to the upper part the tunic uh, this is a little bit more tricky but um, We'll go through that. So stay All right, guys. So I got my pants done. Happy with them. They look good. Uh, so we're going to move on to the tunic aspect. Now, when I make these soft goods for my figures, um, I always take a Dremel. I've got a corded Dremel. Um, I use the really heavy duty. Uh, you can use a, a, <clears throat> a battery powered, but you may have to recharge it a couple times. But what you want to do is 
sand down all that, I guess, girth on the, on the figure. Um, you know, slim him down because when you put these soft goods on, if you don't do that, uh, he's going to look really fat and bulky. Um, so yeah, you want to definitely, you know, slim down his chest, slim down the back. This was an Obi-Wan Black Series uh, torso, um, arms as well. So that way when you put the soft goods on, they go on and they don't, you know, have a lot of bulk to them. It looks normal. So what we're going to do first is cut out your pattern. Now I'm using a, um, I don't even know what you'd call this. I get most of my fabric from Joann's Fabrics. Uh, I do order some on online from Amazon. I have um, a big selection of velvet fabrics that I've started to use. Uh, I get those from Amazon. But most of my standard fabrics I can just get from Joann's. Um, this one I thought was a pretty good match for, I guess, the, t the color that I wanted for Obi-Wan, or excuse me, Obi-Wan, uh, Qui-Gon. So uh, the one downside of this fabric though is it frays really, really, really bad. So when you're doing the tunic, I highly recommend you sew your seams, but then go back and sew them two or three times. That way, when you put this on the figure, um, because putting on the the clothes, the, the pants are easy, they just slide right on. But the, the shirts, you have to you know lift the arms up and slide the uh, the clothes on and if if you don't have really good seams it's just gonna break and then you're gonna have to go back and resew it so again I laid him out I always cut it extra big so I can go back and I can just cut off that excess so what you're gonna do first once you have your pattern um, on the Jedi they have kind of that split so before you start sewing um, I guess the first thing you're going to want to do, open it up and from the corner just fold down and you're going to sew a seam here. Do the same on this side, sew a seam there, top, bottom, so on and so forth. That way when you have it done, you'll have that portion already sewn and then you can just sew up, over, up and over for the top and the arms. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real fast, and then we'll move All on. Alright, so what I did was I had my original fabric. I made, I evened it out, made a little snippet for the head, and then I went ahead and sewed the seams for the arms so that they have a nice finished look to them. I also went ahead, and before I did the sides, sewed the bottom and then I did the side flaps so that both the arms, the side and the bottom all have a clean look. Now from here what I'm going to do is basically start about uh, half an inch below where the corner of the elbow is because keep in mind that isn't going to be my entire sleeve. I'm going to end up coming up to about there. So I'm going to start about here, go up at an angle, and then come straight over for my arm. Um, when I do the soft goods like this, um, I don't do tapered like I do on my robes. I just go straight across. That way the sleeve has an even symmetrical look to it. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that, and then we will put this on and go from there. All right. So I've got the outer part of my tunic sewn. Um, I went ahead and did two seams. I'll probably do a third, but uh, I just want to see what it looks like. So I'm going to flip it inside out, uh, put it on him, and uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty, so I got the tunic on. Um, I like how it looks. It's got, you know, I've got some crease in the sleeve length. They are a little bit long, but like I said, when you bend the elbow, um, it just gives it a more realistic look. It's not just all, you know, straight. Um, I like where my seam lines up. So that looks good there. Um, and you can play around with the fabric. I mean, like right now, it's kind of sticking out. So, you know, when I go to pose it and then take pictures to post online of my work, I always 
kind of play with it a little bit, but for the most part, it looks good. So the next step is going to be to do um, do the inner and then the belt, of course. Um, so I'm going to cut the patterns real fast, and then I will show you how to do those parts. All right, so for the next part, we're going to do these parts of this rope. Um, what I use for this, I don't sew it, uh, just because I think it looks better to not have a, a sew line. So I use this stuff. Uh, I don't know exactly what it's called, but basically um, you get an iron and it under heat. You lay it down, take an iron, stick it on there uh, for about three seconds, and then you peel it off and it leaves the adhesive side you can't really see in here but there's an adhesive on there so it'll leave that there and then you just fold it over it'll stick put your iron back down on it and for about 10 seconds and then lift your iron up and then take your thumb and just run your thumb along it I mean it'll be hot but don't you know burn yourself just run your thumb along it and it'll stick down and basically seal it so it's essentially like a glue but it doesn't have you know any it doesn't leave any residue or anything like that so this is what I use I really love this shit um, so what I do basically his belt is gonna hide well I guess not his belt but that middle one the middle sash is gonna hide the rest so what I just do is feeling where his belt's gonna go right under his waist right there I just lay it out and I always give myself extra but lay it out over the back that looks good so I'm gonna make it <clears throat> um, you want it to stick out a little bit you know past the shoulders you don't want it like right on the shoulders so I make it about three quarters of an inch maybe that's an inch um, but I'll just base it off of this one when I do it so I'm gonna glue it so that it lines right up with the corner of his neck here and then it's gonna come just past the shoulder so I'd say about three quarters of an inch so I'm going to go ahead and, and use my iron, use my sticky uh, sticky tack, and go ahead and make all the sashes. And once I have them made, I will show you how to put them all on. All right, guys. So I got all my sashes made. Um, like I said, that stuff works really well. Gives it a nice, clean, finished look, um, you know, without any stitching lines. So highly recommend it. Um, you can get it at Joanne's Walmart. Um, <clears throat> it's like three dollars so uh, cheap stuff but it works really well so we've got the two that are going to be going over his shoulders we've got his belt we've got his so we're going to do these two first um, basically so we want to look like he's wearing an inner robe you know over top of these two so um, I use this stuff it's extreme power. Uh, it comes in light, medium, or um, heavy duty, I guess. Uh, you can get it at Hobby Lobby in the model section. Uh, it's basically like super heavy duty super glue. Uh, you can use super glue too, like I said, whatever you want. You can use hot glue, honestly. Um, the only thing I don't like about the hot glue is uh, it comes out a lot. Um, I don't want a lot of glue. So, like I said earlier, when I use it, I squeeze it out. Um, I'm just using a, like a Q-tip sort of thing. Uh, you get these at Hobby Lobby as well in the model section. But I'm going to squeeze it out. I'm going to get the end of this wet and then I'm going to, like I said, wipe some of it off on a paper towel. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of do the top, the bottom, and then I'll adhere it into place and just use pressure with my fingers for about 30 seconds and hold it down. Um, that way when it dries, if you put too much glue, it'll bleed through and then you'll have glue marks showing through. You don't want that. Um, so I'm going to do these two first and then we will go ahead and do the uh, sashes over the shoulders and then we will um, do his bottom sash. And then once we have all those done, uh, then we can cut the excess uh, and we'll put his belt around the waist, which will hide any of our overlay. So basically, you know, if you 
have a bunch of excess, cut it off at about an angle to where the, at least the belt will be. And then when you put the belt over top, you see how it just covers all that up. Um, gives it a clean look. So I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing this stuff and uh, be back right, in a minute. So I got them all glued. We got the inner, we got the outer, we got the bottom, and then all the seams were matching right here in the middle. So if any of them were coming beyond, I just take my scissors and snip them off. That way they're all hidden behind the belt or the middle sash and then bring that around. Now the one downside is you are gonna have that showing. Um, so what you wanna do, there's really no way to hide it completely, but um, what you can do, uh, so on the OB-1 Kenobi, um, if you dismantle it, the best way to do that is uh, hot water. Just literally run the middle section under hot water for 30 seconds and then just it'll snap right apart. Um, take that off. Uh, this part is connected to the little tassels hanging down. So just remove this completely. Uh, I just use an X-Acto knife. Um, I wear a mesh glove when I do it because I'm holding the blade right next to my fingers. And I literally just cut all that excess off. So like I said, I just, you know, run the blade up and cut off all that plastic. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and paint that inside brown to uh, just match um, match the uh, the belt, obviously. Uh, so last thing we need to do is just dismantle this, pop it apart, slide the belt up into place, and it should go right over the middle section of the, the sash, and then pop it back together, and that's it. So let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty, got the belt on, and uh, that's it. So as you can see, the belt, it kind of covers up that seam back there, but I mean, it's not gonna cover it up completely, but you throw a cloak on this bad boy, you, you'll never tell. So um, <clears throat> basically that's it, start to finish. How to make uh, the tunic and the pants to go with your Jedi, you know? And like I said, watch my other video on how to make robes and you're all set if you wanna make soft goods for your figures. I mean, I really like doing this, I think it really, makes the figures pop, you know, makes them look a lot more professional. Um, I really enjoy it. So if you like the video, uh, leave a comment, send a like, uh, always look forward to uh, good feedback, but yeah, that's how you make tunic and pants for your, for your Jedi. Cube City out.